Black Ram 313 back at it again. You know why? It's because this is Therapeutic Man. Back again with another video and yet another therapy session. Today's topic and title is Why She Is Not Special. Before we get into the subject matter at hand, I would like to first start by defining the term. And the term special is defined by dictionary.com as being distinguished or different from what is ordinary or usual. Extraordinary, exceptional, as in amount or degree, a special, of special importance. Now, when we think about that term, we know that she wants to feel special. She wants to be seen as being special. Special of mind, right? Classic statement held by Keisha, Caitlin, and Maria. When it comes to the dating scene, classic statement here, and I quote, I want a guy who really wants to get to know me for me. And not just physically. Classic female statement, right? We've heard that many times before and in many circles in different places and in different cases, right? Now, at first glance, such a statement sounds noble and even reasonable, a reasonable request and expectation, right? She can expect that. However, when we examine such a statement closely and scrutinize it and put it under the microscope with red pill lenses, such a statement is laughable and even implausible. The reason for this statement's absurdity is simple. When you really look at it, she has nothing in her or about her that is unique or even interesting in most cases. Nothing interesting or unique that would cause one to really want to get to know her. Nothing interesting about her. Now, tell me in the comments section, if you will, when you've met one that was uniquely amazing. What about her personality did you find memorable, noteworthy? What about her was special, if you care to share? And as we know, she has mainstream thinking. Whatever's on television, whatever's popular, whatever's in the media, her thinking reflects that. Can we call such special? You be the judge. Can it be called special when her thinking is in sync with her peers? also known as the hive mind and group think. She thinks, believes, behaves no different than the rest. I bet her favorite singer is Beyonce. And I've talked about this in my video called Thinking Within the Group or Group Think or also called the hive mind. Same video. I changed the title a few times. Check it out. But anyway, back to this subject. Now, why exactly isn't the succubi, the rotten Chiquita banana, the rabid snow bunny. Why isn't she special? Again, as I said, number one, her thinking was within the group, the hive mind. Here's a study and quote, a study connected or conducted by Brown University in the United States looked at three decades of data and concluded that participants were 75% more likely to get divorced if a friend was divorced too. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a phenomenon called the domino divorce effect. When her friends are divorcing, she will be divorcing. Maybe together they want to get back into the club and start dating and start the cycle all over again. But understand this, if your woman has friends that are leaving their boyfriends or divorcing their husbands, watch out because her thinking is within the group which is one of the reasons why she is not special. Number two, that was the first on my list. 
I got a list of about 10. Number two, she is not witty or intelligent. When have you heard something deep or earth shattering coming from her lips? When is the last time have you heard anything original? Now, some, some now have some understanding of things, but nothing brilliant or on a genius level. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What's the name of that female genius again? What's her name? You know, the female genius. The one that's kind of like Einstein or Hawkins, Stephen Hawkins. What, what, what's her name again? That's what I thought. Birds chirping, right? She makes jokes, but she's not really funny, is she? She's not comedic at all, really, isn't she? Is she? Now, she wants you to make her laugh. But can she really make you laugh? Uh, yeah, here and there. But is she really a comedian? Can she really be funny? Is she really known to have a sense of humor? Keisha, Caitlin, and Maria? Not really. She wants to hear jokes, but really can't crack good jokes, right? Now, what's the name of that a female comedian? I can't think of her name. You know, the one that's just as good as Richard Pryor. Uh, the, the, the comedian that's just as good as Eddie Murphy, Red Fox, Martin Lawrence. What, what, what's that comedian name? You know, the female comedian that's very, very, very funny and is just as good as Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. What, what, what's her name again? Hmm? Really? birds chirping again and if you can find one that's funny she's usually talking over and over about her vag or something no other jokes really just about the vag that's it that's all she can really joke about hmm when you get the name of that comedian that's just as good as Richard Pryor Red Fox Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence put that in the comment section too and be honest about it. But like I said, birds chirping, right? Number four. She has no wisdom to speak of. Where are the wise sayings? Where are the female sages? Where are the books of advanced wisdom? That's the question. I haven't heard any. I've only seen a few in my lifetime with wisdom to speak of, but that is extremely rare. I guarantee you can only name a handful when we can name hundreds and thousands of wisdom or wise men from the ancient world, ancient times and antiquity going on till today. Where are the wise ones? Where are her books of wisdom? You think she's wise? You think you found one that's wise? I guarantee you what she's saying, she's only parroting what she heard a guy say. Number five, special? Hmm. Is she a special friend? Can she be a good friend? No, no, no. She's way too selfish for that, right? When you talk to her on the phone, she always wants to talk about who? Her favorite subject, herself. She's not a special friend. She has no special interest. She's not really concerned about you, only with herself. So is she a special person? No. Special of mine? No. Special friend? Not even close. Not even close. Number six, dealing with the female mind as a whole. As a whole, thinking of the question of if she's special is she special notice number six many or most don't really seek knowledge right now what is she reading what is she reading besides gossip what is she reading besides fiction what is she reading besides that which is of no real mental spiritual 
benefit. You notice she doesn't really care about science, philosophy, spirituality, or self-improvement. No real concern about science, technology, or global affairs. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She doesn't like Trump, huh? Oh, okay, let's talk about that. She doesn't write like Trump. Okay, that's fine. But why? Why, sister? And she's not your sister. But why? Why, suck you by? She don't know. She has no idea. She has no understanding of his political positions or anyone's political positions. She sees that others don't like him, right? So if others don't like him, she doesn't like him either. And I'm not no fan of no politician. But guess what? She voted for Obama twice, right? Isn't that right, Keisha? You voted for Obama two times. But but Keisha, why did you vote for him? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, you got it. Just because everybody else did. Keisha, by the way, what is or what was Obama's stance on U.S. foreign policy. What was his domestic policy? Did you vote for him because of one or the other or both? Keisha, do you even know what U.S. foreign policy is? Do you even understand U.S. domestic policy? Inquiring minds want to know. But I know you can't answer that, Keisha. You got a lot of opinions and a lot of thoughts, but not based off any information. You are not special. Number seven. What can she talk about besides food, drinks, celebrity, trends, gossip, and shopping? This is her only true interest. Her mind is rather small, isn't it? Yep, quite small indeed. She says she educated, though. Silly suck you by. A degree is only a show of memory and it shows that you are trainable it doesn't say that you are knowledgeable per se or wise it's not a show of wisdom Keisha that's like saying because somebody can read that the same person who can read and write can also create literature write literature on the level of Shakespeare or Edgar Allan Poe just because you went to school to be trained, Keisha, doesn't make you intelligent or wise or knowledgeable. But that's what she's been programmed to think or what she chooses to think for her own vanity, right? Not at all, Keisha. Silly, a suck you by. Number eight. Number eight. When you think about it, the eighth point I want to make, when you think about it now, what does she really bring to the table that's special? What does she really bring to the table that's different? What does she really do in a relationship? Yes, she brings the vag. But I never heard a man say, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you're different, let me know. But I never heard a man say that he is dating her for her mind. Never really heard a guy say that. Now, there are exceptions, of course. But most of the time, Keisha, Maria, and Caitlin don't necessarily want to be known for their intellect. They want to be known for being attractive. Don't believe me? Well, why do you think she spends all her time, her efforts, and her resources on hair, makeup, and shoes instead of books? Answer that for me, buddy. Why? If she wants to be known for her mind then why does she spend so much time and energy and effort and money on the physical? Where your money is, where your treasure is, your heart is also. Show me her library full of books about something other than something fictitious. Show me the library, Keisha. Show it to me, Caitlin. Show me the library, Maria. Where's your treasure? You're wearing it on your head. You're wearing it on your face and on your feet. So how can you be special? She is not special. Number nine, most of the time in dating her, she's an emotional drain. 
She's always hurt, always offended, needy and greedy, always uncertain, always mad, always beefing. The same behavior. Group behavior, right? They're like this, right? Isn't it rare to see a female who can control her wide range of emotions? Isn't that a rare thing? And from a certain vantage point, and from a certain perspective, many seem to be insane. Anyway, number 10 and final. Majority of the time, just like her friends, just like her associates, just like everybody around her on social media, financially, she's a liability. Most of the time, she's broke. Flashy, but broke. Rare is it to see her being financially responsible. Very rare have I seen a financially responsible succubus. Now she got a good job, yeah. Making good money, but she broke. Why? It's because of her extreme greed and materialism. Therefore, the average succubi, number one, has debt. Number two, one or more kids. Number three, overweight. Number four, poor financial management. She's an impulse shopper. Number five, promiscuous. Number six, she's entitled, an entitled mentality. Number seven, a poor attitude, she frowns. Often, you see one succubi, you see them all. Number eight, she goes to church to worship JC. Number nine, she's difficult to get along with. And number 10, she wants to be worshipped. Now, that wasn't the list that I previously mentioned. This is what I mean by when I say, if you know one succubi, you know all of the succubi. I'm going to say it again because it sounds good. I guarantee you cannot find one that is outside of this mode. I bet you can't find one that is different from this right here. And it sounds so good. It's so precise. I'm going to say it again for you. The average a succubus, number one, has debt. Number two, one or more kids. Number three, overweight. Number four, poor financial management. Impulse shopper. Number five, she's promiscuous. Number six, she has an entitled mentality. Number seven, she has a poor attitude. She frowns often. Number eight, she goes to church to worship JC and give the preacher her money. Number nine, she is difficult to get along with. Number 10, she wants to be worshipped. Now show me. Give me an example of someone who doesn't have one or more of these 10 things going on. A succubus. A little bit less for the Chiquita banana. And a little bit less for the snow bunny. But the succubus, nine times out of 10, she has all of these things going on. So when you meet her at the club on the dating sites, in your everyday walk, at the grocery store, at the gas station. I can almost guarantee that these 10 things apply. So then how is she special? How many have you met that were different? Yeah, I've met a few in my lifetime. Again, a few and far and between. Not many, not many. And if I met one that's exceptional, maybe it was one, two or three, but sure not 10, not 20. They're basically the same. And all of these things, all these characteristics of the majority show that she's nothing special. They sing the same tune. Now, one might be louder than the other, but basically it's the same thing. You meet Keisha. You meet. Taekwondo, what is the difference in the mentality? Yeah, she thinks she's special. Show sure enough. But is she really? And if you found one that is special, list that special characteristic. But yeah, she thinks she's special. She thinks that the birds, as they chirp, that they're singing to her. She thinks that the sun rays shine exclusively on her. 
That's probably why she uses the flower filter around her head on a selfie. Well, they all do that, right? She thinks that she's smart, witty, and funny. Unique, very special, right? But I tell you, men, that she is none of those things. She is an empty vessel, useless, a soulless, far from smart, far from witty, far from being funny. If we talk in terms of personality, rest assured that hers is like all others, nothing special. And guys, when we say we love a woman, what are we actually loving if she's not special? Do you love her worldliness, her group think? Do you love the fact that she thinks and behaves like every other out there in the world? What are you loving? Tell me. This is therapy, right? Now, as I've become more introspective, hashtag it more, as I've searched my own soul, as I've searched the scriptures, man, I realize that I cannot love for she is the reflection of that which is worthy of despise. Worldliness, vanity, materialism, and a number of abominable things. I realize that I can only love a woman if She's a reflection of me and my ideas, my worldview, my thinking, and my way of life. Then I can love her if she's reflecting me. And if she cannot do such, then I have the same disdain for her as I have for the rest of the world. And I am commanded by the scriptures not to love the world. If she can reflect me, then I can love her. Just sharing a few thoughts with you. Like the video, subscribe, hit the notification button so that you will not miss a Block Ram 313 video. Email link is in the description box. Patreon link is in the description box. And if you'd like to donate, PayPal link is also in the description box box and until next time stay red and stay well in other words stay well and stay red peeled black ramp 313 and i'm out